I'm here once again tramming the spindle of my milling machine. This time I'm tramming it to the table. There, when I when I did my last video <laughs> on tramming, I'm already doing my second one here. I got very much the comment uh, that I'm doing it not correct. At least I had, had it felt like that. But when you you do something like this. It, the easiest thing is to to recreate the the scene that you that you want to talk about, and put some extremes on it. In this case, I, I I flipped the head of the mill 20 degrees off axis, and also my table. In this case, the faceplate of the indexing head also 20 degrees. And now I'm here tramming my spindle to to. To the faceplate and it's pretty well trimmed. It's within 50 microns. I'm not going to do it crazy good here since we are at a very extreme angle and this will very much show the issue that I want to show here. With the technique, with the two techniques I showed in the last video using the quill as a test bar and moving the table over when you swing the indicator around, you are tramming the spindle to the axis of the machine. And that's usually what you want. The, the table surface uh, usually doesn't interest us too much if you're not trying to drill at an angle. But if I want to have the spindle vertical and get, and for example, get um, with a fly cutter, that was also a comment, uh, a crosshatch pattern, I would never get right away with a fly cutter, a crosshatch pattern, if I sweep the table and the table is mildly worn. As you can see, because then the spindle is just at an angle. And there is another issue, because uh, there are many issues. So I have my, I have my spindle now trammed to the table, as, you, as one does. Now let's say We take our drill chuck out. Well, would be nice. We take our drill chuck out and we take our collet out. Well, collet stays in because we're using an edge finder. And we put in our edge finder. And we have a feature on our part. This is just a magnet to show you the, the idea here. I can absolutely edge find on this block now. Which I will do. Just tighten the screws of the head here so it doesn't spin on me. That would be rather fun. So I can edge find on this. Okay, did my edge finding. Zeroed out my DRO or entered half the diameter of the edge finder. Okay, what now? Uh, now we want to drill a hole. Let's say we want to drill a hole five millimeters to the left of this block. So I'm going to lower the spindle because now we need a drill chuck and a drill. If I can't find so we have a drill chuck and just use this PCB drill here as an example. A uh, normal drill would be better. So now I'm moving over my my five millimeters and want to drill a hole. It should be five millimeters over from this edge, but uh, 
Uh, whoops. Um, whoops, that's, uh, well, it, it's obvious when you put things at an extreme angle like this. <laughs> um, it's, less, it's less visible if you have like 20 microns error and it's way, a way milder error. But usually you want your your mill head tramped to the movement of the axis, not to the table. Usually you're milling apart and then the surface is, is uh, horizontal to the ways anyway and not to the table anymore. In an ideal case, if the machine is not worn, etc., etc., uh, that would be the same. But speaking of a mildly worn machine or a very much worn where the table is, has a 20 degree slant to it, this will not work. Huh. Bummer. <laughs> uh, that's really a problem if that's that's also if on, on CNC machines when the head is, is not perfectly vertical and you're changing from the very short 3D probe to a very long gauge length tool holder and a long end mill, you will get an X error, an X positional error, and that can be very significant. So uh, check the tram of your spindles to the axis. There are relatively few cases where you really want to tram to the surface of the table itself, even if I get called dumb again, but uh, that's very much my opinion. This doesn't help me. If, But with the two techniques I showed, I can tram the spindle of the machine vertical to the travel, despite the table itself being completely off. So let's get the drill chuck out of the way because this eats up a ton of sea space. First the test bar or the quill method, where we extend the quill and we just run an indicator So, and now I tram the quill to the movement of the C-axis, which should be square to the X-axis. There is of course an error and wear in this machine and in pretty much every machine that is not new. It's a more realistic depiction of the spindle vertical verticality of the spindle being vertical uh, compared to sweeping the table. How would you do the sweep? move sweep method that I showed in the last videos with, with a table that's that much off. Well, you could put a tooling ball here on the table and find the top spot of that ball and spin and do the same again. Let's, let's try that. I have a ball on a shank here in a V-block and I'm just going to magnet it to the table here. Should be, should be rigid, rigid enough to do some indicating on it. Let's try this. I, I have not done this before, so, well, that's the wrong call it. So you basically find the high spot of a ball on the table. Just like this. Find the high spot in two axes. We have to do it in two axes because the ball is round. Then we zero out. Oh great. <laughs> oh, this is going to be painful. You find the high spot here. You zero out the dial or spin it to a convenient position. And then you about move spin it 180 degrees. It doesn't have to be 180 degrees. It can be 175 or 185 or 160. You just need to find the high spot here again on the ball and not 
crash into things like the tooling ball. Okay. My zero was at uh, with the needle at 30. So spindle is not trimmed very well. It's off by 50 micron over a swing of over a swing of 140 millimeters in diameter. That's not brilliant, but it gives you the idea that we can do tramming with the table completely out of tram if you use the top of a tooling ball. This is a very esoteric method. But I think it goes to show that there are about a million ways to do things and often it's not obvious what you want to achieve. At first glance you think, yeah sure I will just sweep the table. But if the table is, is out of flat or if you have an universal table on your machine, uh, that's an issue. So let's, let's get this trammed a little bit better. Yeah, this is going to be super painful to tram on the ball because when the indicator moves you get a false reading of course. But still I want to show it. So got it to, to 25 and I'm going to zero out the indicator here. Okay, that's top of the tooling ball at zero. Swinging the indicator around, moving the x-axis over, uh, avoid crashing into the tooling ball. And finding the high spot of the tooling ball again. Okay, I overdid it. The, the spindle is tilting to the left a little bit. So the indicator is actuated too much, means the spindle is tilted left, means the indicator comes down. So let's Let's see if we get it on this try. Okay, high spot, high spot about 180 degree. Yeah, this would not be an everyday method of tramming with the tooling ball, but sometimes maybe that's the only way to do it. Gives you options. Options are always nice to have. There we go. Yeah, that's within 10, 10 microns. A little bit more, 12 maybe. A little bit more than one needle's width over 10 micron. So that's, what would be the procedure to get the complete machine back in tram now? Like get the table back squared. Well. That's a case where when you just put an indicator on the table, mount it somewhere rigid, and then you move just the, the axis back and forth, and you tilt the table until it's square in one axis, then you do the same in the, the other axis. That's to align the table, or in my case, the indexing head. And then you go and do your head, or do only the head if you need only the head. If you have a bridge port, you also have the knot you have your side to side tilt and you have also the knot. Um, if you want to use the quill as a test bar, you have to go back and forth a little bit because um, if, if your head is knotted uh, in one direction, you will get a, a reading that's off by traversing the quill 
uh, with the table. But that's kind of obvious. Uh, most people will know that. So I hope this clarified a little bit the idea behind these techniques. <laughs>